And this is where the fun really ended. Uh, I had no clue what I was doing when I was doing this project, but I do know for sure that the 40 amp ESC will explode. So if you're going to start this, just go to a 70 or higher. Trust me. It was at this moment that he knew. He f***ed up. Since this project is pretty much building an RC jet, I stuck with a lot of the parts used in the RC world. So XD60 connectors are great for high current, as well as flexible silicone wiring, uh, thick gauge enough to handle the current as well. Uh, the XD60 connectors, if you have a horrible soldering iron like I do, are a huge pain uh, to work with. But they are, once you get them right, it's a really sturdy connection. Uh, and the beefy wires I'm using here were, I ended up having to trim them down a bit to fit into the XT60 connectors. And then here I'm connecting uh, a low amperage wire, both positive and negative, uh, where these leads will be connecting to the power source. So those extra lines are going to be used to power uh, both our voltage meter as well as the LEDs. Uh, and then the light and the switch that'll be installed next. To give the effect that the jet is actually putting out fire, I picked up a pack from Amazon. It's a yellow flicker LEDs that come with their own resistors. Uh, this was something completely new to me, but apparently if you hook them up straight up for too long uh, to a 12 volt power source, they'll pull too much amperage and will burn out the flicker element within them. So this is something I knew nothing about, but it's really once you know, I believe it's the longer side is positive, the shorter side is negative on the actual LEDs. You just have to put a resistor between either side. So that way you don't burn them out. Uh, and then these give a pretty cool effect, uh, similar to you know like the little fake candles you see in a, uh, a vase at restaurants. And this is where I start to do unnecessary things that make the project take longer. Um, very well could have used this light, you know, completely fine by just plugging in the battery and everything lights up right away. I wanted to add kind of the added benefit of being able to flip a big toggle switch uh, and power it on, but it does complicate things quite a bit. It also gives you a, a bunch of wire that you have to hide. So if you skip any steps, skip this one. Uh, but it is nice, you know, I have the blue color uh, from the switch as well as the voltage meter uh, to keep track of the battery from getting too low uh, and then distribute it out to those flicker LEDs. So the name Monica 2.0, it's kind of an inside joke, uh, but I made this jet uh, leaf blower for my dad. And every year out at our farm, he has massive bonfires and he always pulls out his leaf blower 
uh, and stokes the fire to just make flames launch in every direction. Uh, and he always jokes that his leaf blower's name is Monica, so I figured what better uh, than to go ahead and name it Monica 2.0. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. So when I first started testing, uh, what you could actually hear in the video, uh, it's like a whistle, uh, but it seems like that screen was blocking enough of the airflow that it was actually causing it to sound more whiny and whistly uh, as it was really like starved for air. So I went ahead and drilled holes all the way around uh, and then repainted it again just so it could fully breathe. And then it sounds like more of a roar than a whine. <laughs> 